have a message here. Question about repentance. What is repentance? You hear that a lot. You gotta repent. You gotta repent. And the question always says, repent from what? Repent from your sins. Be honest. You've heard that being preached to you or heard it on some Christian program or maybe some Christian that walks up to you and starts to talk to you about the subject matter, repenting. You gotta repent of your, of your sins. You have to ask forgiveness of your sins. That's different from repenting. What, I don't understand. I wrote two words up in the board. You might as well put, put on the board. Metanoia or metanoia or metanoia, depending on how you want to pronounce it, there's several different pronunciations, is used quite often in the New Testament, and it means a change of mind to repent. And the root word comes from right below it means a true change of heart. So in a sense, if you have a change of mind to repent, it is going to change your heart. Now, keep it on the board. I try a simple over. I'm probably oversimplifying this, but you get this question. I get this question asked a lot. Here's, let's just call him sinner. Here's a sinner. We're all sinners. You're saved by grace. That's puts you in a different camp. But everybody, everyone sins. And we need to be saved and rescued. And that's what Christ did on the cross for us. Here's a sinner. He starts his day and he goes down his journey. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. Every day. Doing what he wants to do. Following his way. Not denying himself, follow, uh, taking up the cross and following Jesus. None of those things. Forget even that. He thinks he's, what he's doing is just A-OK. -okay. He's a good person. Doesn't really have that much evil towards anyone in his own mindset. Donates a couple of charities here and there. Does what all good things a normal person would think brings them right with God. They're not. Only Jesus Christ can bring us right with God. I've been accused in the past of, you preach salvation by works. Then you haven't heard anything that I've preached. You're just assuming that because that tells me you just, you either pick that up from just something that you didn't read correctly that I had transcribed or something that I preached that you twisted. I have never preached salvation by works. It's not impossible. I mean, it's impossible. The only way is through Jesus Christ. That's why he says, I am the way. Here's sinner man or sinner woman going throughout his journey of the day, day in, day out. What he doesn't realize Let's say this is a 300-foot sinkhole. I misspelled it. He's right over it. A 300-foot sinkhole. As he walks, and he has nothing along that path of his life, day in, day out. And I'm oversimplifying this for a minute, I'm to make a point. There is nothing in his path either by his or her choice, or by not ever been told the truth rightly divided. But most of the time, far as salvation is concerned, it's probably because he or she chose not because a state of unbelief. And I'll probably have to go to the book of Hebrews now to, to, to talk a little bit about the 
about that, but because they're state of unbelief, they chose that they're okay, and they're just going to walk down this path, and here they walk down this path. And if there's nothing in this path, then have them change their mind, which will change their heart. It's going to eventually fall in this ditch. Now, that's 300 foot deep sinkhole they're falling into. So death is certain at the end of their journey. Death is certain. But what if? What if, if there was some signpost, some message that says, wait a minute, you, sinner man or sinner woman, think that you got it all set right in your mindset and you don't need Jesus Christ. As long as you do good things, good deeds, and be a good person, what if you're wrong? Now, along your journey, there's a signpost. That signpost is the gospel, the good news. Now, before you get to this sinkhole, which is certain death, or the end of your life, let's just call it that, thank God you at least give the opportunity. That's where this ministry comes in and other ministries that write by the word. To get the message, and I'm oversimplifying this for a reason. Get the message of the gospel of the good news of who? Of Jesus Christ. Not of Buddha, not of whoever, but of Jesus Christ. And what happens? When you get to this point and you see this signage, it's going to either, you're going to reject it because you're in a state of unbelief and you're going to continue down this road to certain death, or you're going to have a change of mind which will cause you to repent to bring you to a state of a true change of heart. People complicate this all the time, but it's that basic. The choice is still the sinner person. How he's going to react when confronted with the sign that makes this person literally turn around his or her life and now following away from that certain death to eternal I can't bend down so the writing is really awful eternal life it's that simple keep it on the board for a few minutes it won't hurt it's that simple now open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews well let's go to Mark first let's go to Mark See, there's been people, many preachers, that, are, and even people with good intentions that have no business communicating, really, what I just presented on the board because they have no clue what it really means, both these words in the Greek and how it's to be carried out in translation and how it changed your mind so you can have a true change of heart. And they keep preaching that, oh, wow, you have to have repent. And repent is the act of forsaking or giving up some sin or sins. And they make that a prerequisite for believing on Jesus Christ or believing in Jesus Christ for salvation. You got to give up that or give up this. Mark, chapter 1, verse 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and do what? Repent ye. There it's a change of heart.
and do what? And believe the gospel. There the word is pisteo, not believe. Have trust, have confidence in the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. What Jesus preached and what Jesus communicated was to sinners is to have your mind change and believe now in me, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, did everyone... He to the sign that you see there on the board as my example? No. They didn't. Most of them didn't heed to it. They kept their journey, their everyday life. Controlled by them. Moving forward what they thought was right. And they didn't think they needed Jesus Christ. I mean, you go to the big book of Hebrews, chapter 3. Verse 18. We give a, the whole chapter, it gives a little history lesson about, and towards the middle of the chapter, toward the end of the chapter, it gives a little history about Moses and Egypt. I'll just start with verse 16. Well, I'll start with verse 15. Well, it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. See, go back to the board. The one thing's going to happen, one or two things are going to happen. You as the sinner man or sinner woman that has not put their trust and confidence in Jesus Christ, either your heart's going to be softened by the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ or it's going to continually be hardened. And you'll justify it some reason, somehow, why you're right and everyone else is wrong. And you'll continue down this journey. The writer here in the Hebrews, uh, the writer of the Hebrews here in this book of Hebrews tells us that for some reason, well, it tells us the reason, not some reason, just read it. Well, it is said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he greed forty years? Not with them that had sinned. Well, I thought he was grieved at their sin. Read it with me. For some, when they heard, they provoked, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? He's asking the question. Ask it to yourself and what you've been told and what you've believed all these years. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it? That's in italics. That's not even in the, in the original. So scratch that out. Not with them that had sinned. So he wasn't grieved with them that had sinned? Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Read on. And to whom swore that he, swore he that they should not enter his, into his rest? But to them that believed not, there is refused to be obedient. Obedient to what? To his instruction. And he goes on to continue and say, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Apistia there in the Greek. Take notice. God doesn't say because of sin they could, didn't enter into rest. Not that because sin wasn't around. It's not because sin's not around today. It's a plenty. Back then and even now. But Jesus, the Lord clearly states, why did he enter into that rest? 
because of this. Put it on the board. A change of mind didn't take place, or a change of heart could happen. They would not change their evil hearts of unbelief or minds. New Testament zeroes it down to one word. They didn't repent in all the meaning here that I placed on the board, meanings of what true repentance is all about. It's not, in the book of Hebrews, even it warns, I guess even believers, about renouncing your state of repentance. Just go back a few verses to verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing or withdrawing from the living God. Go back to the board. It's like you, you repented, you got the message, you turned your life around, but for some reason you went back this way again. But now you're ignoring this message completely, this signage, and you're heading down to that certain death sinkhole. And that warning should not be taken lightly in verse 12 here, especially those once saved, always saved people. That warning's not there by accident. It's there for a reason. I'm not saying that sin does not contribute to unbelief by hiring your heart or somehow des desensitizing you from the consciousness of what sin does to you and how it destroys you, destroys your life, destroys families, destroys souls. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But all I'm saying, especially in our world today, most will get this message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It's going to de depend on how you respond to it. Is it going to change your mind? Is it going to lead to a true change of heart? Verse 13 says, but exhort one another daily. That's what I'm doing right now, even to the believers. Because the Warning went for, is for, of the possibility of you removing that signpost and forgetting about it for some reason or somehow changing of what it truly says and what it wants to continually to mean in your life and you substitute it with something else, which can't happen. You see saints that even Paul dealt with that backslid and just flipped around and start heading way, way back to that sinkhole that I drew in the board. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. After repenting, you think Satan's going to let up? He's going to throw every deceitful trick he has in his, or up his sleeve or in his book, wherever he keeps it, at you. Sin destroys. It destroys lives. And furthermore, people repent all the time, every day. But that's not enough for true conversion that leads to eternal life. Sinners change their mind every day. They might be an atheist and convert to Buddhism because they repent from their atheistic ways and now they're Buddha believers. Does that lead them in the other direction to eternal life? No. It still continues this journey to the sinkhole. See, you can change your mind as a sinner.
But you must repent and change your mind about your unbelief. Unbelief in who or what? Well, the who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And only he, nothing else, leads to salvation. You're going to have to make the choice when you come across that signage. And the signage is an example of someone preaching you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which direction you're going to head? Listen. And the battle rages. We all sin. We repent for sin. And sometimes, I'm not going to get into your own mind and your own sins. There's a battle going on because you're fighting against those sins constantly. Read Romans 7 and read it slowly. I don't have time tonight to get into it. You could see that struggle that Paul refers to. The back and forth struggle. So don't be too quick on judging people who said they have repented by saying, well, if they had truly repented, they would still not be doing it. That's just a self-righteous statement. Because if true repentance is, is about completely forsaking sin, then doesn't, why don't all of us, me, you, anyone that you might know, repent from all sin so we can be totally sinless? Right? Why don't we? See, Bible repentance is about a changing of a mindset. Our minds. Our wills. And to start walking, not in the power of the flesh to try to change sin, but let the Holy Spirit, now that it's in you because you're trusting and having confidence in the good news of gospel of Jesus Christ and him, he and God as Father, do the changing. Our lives should be fulfilled, or not fulfilled, filled with repentance daily, if you really think about it, and daily changing our minds. That's what Paul was referring to in, he, in, Ro in Romans 12. I beseech you, I call you to join me. Therefore, brethren, verse 1, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed. Or literally fashion oneself to this world. But ye transformed or changed by the renewing of what? By the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, a renewing of your mind. A daily transformation needs to take place. When a sinner, that sinner man or sinner woman there on the board... sees Christ and now trusts and has confidence in Him as his Lord or her Lord and Savior, that very act itself carries with it the very act of repentance. And you're on a new journey, 
Not one headed to that sinkhole because you had a change of mind which changed your heart. You're headed in a different direction and only God knows which direction He's going to take you. But the Holy Spirit will lead. True repentance is a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of will, a change of destination, a final destination. By the ongoing washing of the rightly the word, word of God, which I preach from, that starts that process of sanctification. And he will continue his good work in you by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. That's what repentance is all about. I oversimplified it to not to confuse the subject matter. But true repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of heart. And now he takes over and he changes your destination. The problem is too many people don't like the destination. So as they flipped it around, that's why the warning in Hebrews 12. What was it? Hebrews 12. Hebrews 3, excuse me. Hebrews 3, verse 12, I believe it was. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Satan will throw everything at you, including your own justification And reason why this signage, even though you might believe it to be true, but somehow you had to build on to this signage and rewrite the word of God so you still can continue on your journey that pleases you, that does not deny itself, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. Even a repenting one was forewarned. Don't let that spirit of or evil heart of unbelief come into your life and flip you. And flip you. You got it? Well, if you do, let me know while they play this song. Change of mind, a change of heart. Play the song.